Hey everybody, this is Perch. All right, what do we got here? How to um sorry. You know what that that is kind of a little sad is a lot of the um a lot of the males I get are they're, they're they're negative by nature. They're asking more questions about the community and about the people involved and all the rest of that kind of stuff. And the sad part to me is like comic books have so many things to talk about. Yet the few, the, you know, a vast majority of the males I get are are complaining about one side to the other. And I know this channel gets uh, portrayed in a few different ways, depending on who you're listening to. So sometimes it's a woke channel that is a uh, industry shill. Which I always find just bizarre. I, I I understand one side better than the other. I don't understand that one because I complain about plenty of things, and in, and I guess unless you're paying attention, um, really cutting complaints. Me talking about how people aren't getting paid on time and that kind of stuff is a pretty like that's a pretty damning thing. So it's always surprising to me when you know it it's like Perch is a shell. Man, I'm I'm not ever working for Marvel. You got to understand. That. That uh, going after them for their pay is infinitely worse in their eyes than going after them for having, say, you know, Blade's daughter. Like, they're, like they're not comparable in terms of how pissed off one makes that company. Um, but anyway, that a lot of the the mails I get, it, it's either you know too woke shill, or it's uh, you know chud or what's a chud light because I complain about certain things and apparently. You can't complain about certain things unless you're complaining about fans complaining about things. It's that's that's all you can do, or unless the magical day occurs. And I'm convinced, by the way, that a lot of people just view it this way, where um, they're they're also frustrated with a bunch of things in comics, but they feel like they can't say anything. So what happens is they just, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, they just choose to ignore a lot of it. And then uh, when finally, you know, it's like a C.B. Sobolski is revealed to be a you know, fake Asian writer, then like they, they vent all of their built up frustration on that versus the fact that these comics are too expensive and, you know, the, the, the writing sucks half the time. Anyway, I, I, that's just a philosophy. But, but let's get to an actual comic mail. Uh, Future of Wildstorm. All right. Good afternoon, Perch Von Perchington. Thank you very much. As a huge fan of 90s comics, I was particularly fond of Image Comics, particularly of Wildstorm titles. Since the sale of Wildstorm to DC so long ago, it seems as though Wildstorm has become more or less an afterthought or missed opportunity. The exile change, is there a future for Wildstorm? Thank you very much for your videos. Hope you and your family are well. Well, I, I had, like, so first of all, I answered this question recently. So please, if you were the writer of this, go back and look at least a little bit. Search under Wildstorm, my channel. Um, I talked about this already, like, what should DC do with Wildstorm? My answer is exactly the same as it was months ago when I did the last video. I have no idea when they, they came out. Um, and that was that, you know, DC should just commit to a pocket universe, do something confined, go go all in on that, and uh, stop trying to integrate with the DC universe. It's not going to work, you know, for, you, you just can't. Plus, Wildstorm as a concept was just vastly different to a world of Superman and Batman. Like, you got to change them so radically in order to make the, the pieces even work together. It's not worth it. So I just think it's a bad idea. Um, so, you know, but what do I think the future of Wildstorm is? If I'm being honest, it's more bullshit. It's just going to be, um, you know, Grifter is going to show up in the issue of Nightwing and they are going to do six issues with it and then it's got to fade back into obscurity. Um, Wildstorm isn't going to be successful at DC as a concept because they, they tweak the characters to make it work in the DC universe and they, like, they lose all the charm of these characters. So it's just, it's just not going to go. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit further and we'll get onto a different topic a little bit, but if I was DC, I would be thinking to myself, look, I want to go play where manga is with the Tonkaban size, the smaller format put into other places. I, I don't, I feel uncomfortable taking that risk or gamble with Superman and Batman. So I would just do like, I would use Wildstorm as an opportunity to do something completely different with the printing and the publishing and the distribution, and everything else. I have a feeling Wildstorm would probably work really well in a jump style 
where you're doing kind of eight 12 page stories in an anthology as long as it's it's very tightly confined which wildstorm would be i think that's probably a good answer by the way you get stronger art talent like you could go call up brett booth and say hey we want you to do like you know eight pages every two weeks and that's a lot don't get me wrong i mean i have no idea if brett would want that or not but i i mean i think you could do that i think you could get artists to commit to like hey we want um you know, we want uh, a, a you know a, a a couple chapters, eight pages at a time, of um, you know, it, for six months or so. I I don't know. You could just you could fix it where I think it'd be really appealing for some pretty top notch artists that basically are sitting in covers only land right now. I think I think you can make that work. But let me broaden the question a little bit because there's a lot of image titles that are kind of left to their own devices. At some point, will Rob Liefeld sell the Youngblood Extreme line to someone? I mean, I have to believe that, well, but and then I know the rights are all jacked up with that and everything else, but let's just pretend for a moment that Rob is, is holding the rights to Youngblood and he has full control over it and everything else, um, and he sells it to Marvel. What would that look like? The Youngblood universe in Marvel. I tend to think it wouldn't go very well because, again, these characters are very, very different. And I think the problem with having a, the big two, these two big conglomerates, is they control their universe, which, you know, may be fine. It's, it's, it's their dollar, after all. They, but the problem with it is um, they will swallow up smaller companies, swallow, or smaller entities, and then they kind of seem lost of what to do with it. By the way, this isn't unlike uh, when big corporations buy technology and you have like a Microsoft that buys a small company uh, like LinkedIn, for example, and then they don't really know what to do with it. It gets awkward and uncomfortable very, very rapidly because, you know, Microsoft, they didn't they didn't build it themselves. And so they they get they they, they suddenly get paralyzed as to how it's going to work. and. So it, it kind of stumbles. The vision is is gone. I think the same thing is largely true in comics. You get Wildstorm acquired. If, say, Marvel acquired the uh, Youngblood world, or let's say uh, DC acquired Spawn, I think the end result would be Spawn would become a second stringer character because, you know, what does Marvel do with it? Look at this way. Marvel got the rights to Angela. They bought, they paid money to get the rights to Angela. She showed up in Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, then they had this uh, weird kind of story in Thor. Where has Angela been for the last year? I, I'm honestly asking. I could, I'm, I'm sure I probably missed it. But has Angela been anywhere for the last year? And is that, I mean, is Marvel doing anything with this character? I think this is the fate of all of these characters, whether it's Wildstorm, whether it's anybody's books. I mean, another example is Marvel got the rights to, you know, Alien and Predator. And, you know, what have they done with it? It still feels like uh, an afterthought. You know, Marvel's uh, Star Wars books. I, I know, you know, they sell well in certain circles, but still, you know, it feels like an afterthought. By the way, I'm not suggesting that you merge the Star Wars universe in with the Marvel universe. And I want to see, you know, Thor boning Leia. Um, I, I'm just saying that it, it, you know, if it, it's not their core books and I think, you know, they don't know what to do with it. You know, you take a look at the Transformers license and IDW kind of tried to do some things with it. Um, it was mixed results. I'm being generous there. Uh, we have Skybound now doing GI Joe and Transformers and they're committing to it. They're, they're really going all in on what that book should be. But if you take that same scenario, like like all of the things that Marvel would play with, because they did have Transformers and G.I. Joe for a while, there were moments where the runs were really good, but it always felt like Marvel kind of had this perception that it's not ours, we didn't invent it, therefore it's not as important. And I think uh, as a result, you know, we got subpar comics. I just don't think that, uh, you know, the DC ever is going to make Wild, Wildstorm work. I don't think it's it's humanly possible for them to to have that be a success. Um, 
I, no matter what they do. I mean, I've given some suggestions. Again, go check out that other video. And we asked for a lot of comments. People in the comments had good ideas for what could become a wild storm. But overall, I think you're pushing kind of jello up a hill. It's just not something that that uh, the, that DC knows what to do with and can do anything with it in a reasonable way. So as a result, if we're hoping that DC really makes some good progress on uh, Wildstorm, I think we're, we're kidding ourselves. I think it's, you know, if you're hoping that Angela is going to be a, a great, big, important figure in Marvel, forget about it. I, it, it just is what it is. Um, so I think these properties are going to belong either completely isolated, which the big two are unwilling to do for reasons best known only to them, or they've got to be in the hands of a smaller company that's going to treat it, you know, like it's the most important thing. Otherwise, you know, we're, 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 we're just kind of wasting our time. So what do you think? Am I being too negative? Let me know in the comments below, like, and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.